Hi everybody, it's Tim Yao here, Community Pioneer in Roundhouse Park and Crungleford, and welcome to your assembly this week. Well, last week you had Reverend Graham, we talked about trust, and I'm going to continue with that theme for the rest of this half term. But what is trust? Well, when we look at the dictionary, it tells us that trust is to believe that someone is good and honest and they will not harm you, or that something is safe and reliable because you can trust people and you can trust things like I'm trusting this seat at the moment to hold me up. And uh, if I if I sat on it and I wasn't trustworthy, it might break. So but you can also trust people like your friends and your family and your teachers and things like that. So that's something about trust. During the coronavirus lockdown, you know, when we couldn't go out, some of you had to stay at home. Uh, and the government gave us lots and lots of restrictions, things that we shouldn't do to keep us safe. Remember wearing masks, uh, washing our hands for 20 seconds, singing happy birthday twice. Um, uh, can you remember right at the beginning, this started to appear and people were saying, stay alert, control the virus and save lives. So very early on in the in the government's lockdown to stop coronavirus, those are the three things they were saying. Stay alert, be alert, kind of be aware of the where the virus might be and someone might have it or it might be on some uh, something you might touch. Uh, control the virus. So, you know, by washing your hands and all that kind of thing and wearing your masks, not going out unless you really had to and save lives because we wanted to uh, make sure people, you know, didn't catch the virus. And we we didn't at that time. We didn't have a, a, a vaccination against it. So it was really important that we try to save lives by doing these things. So at the time when the government was giving out this advice to stay alert, control the virus and save lives, people started to have a little bit of fun with it. And they, they started to think about what other three things would they say? Because some people didn't trust the government. They didn't think the government was honest and uh, I didn't believe uh, they were reliable. So they started to do their own things. So things like back to work, catch the virus and save the billionaires. Because people thought, some people thought that the government was only bothered about wealthy people. Or what about this? Um, ooh, be careful. Mind how you go. Be lucky. So that was kind of a silly way of saying, like, you know, we can't do anything anyway. Why not have a bit of fun with it? Or what about this? Sneak up, shout at the virus, ah! and then run. Now, of course, that's not really going to uh, help uh, kind of <laughs> the, help stop the coronavirus, is it? But they were just having a bit of fun and they were thinking about these things because deep down, some people didn't trust the government with the medical advice and their warnings. How about this is a nice one. Live, laugh and love. Live, laugh and love. Now, I think that is good advice. And in the a lockdown it was hard to to live on on your own all the time or just with your family not allowed that but to, to love and to laugh and to look for those moments of happiness and contentment even though things were really really difficult i wonder if you had to th write three trustworthy pieces of advice what would your piece of advice be? What would you write in these three empty boxes? I'm going to press uh, pause now on the, whoever's in control of the video. Just press pause now and maybe just for a moment, have a think. What three pieces of advice would you give uh, to help people get through the corona? So three trustworthy things that you could say that helped you during the coronavirus lockdowns. Are ready? OK, ready and pause. OK, welcome back. Well, uh, if I was there with you right now, I'd be able to listen to some of your excellent advice. But maybe whoever's uh, your teacher could write them on the board or, or or maybe you could just think about how we've learned things. and We learned to trust and do good things, even though things are really, really difficult. Well, I work for Kringleford Hub and we have three pieces of advice. And our advice is this. Go deeper live well and love your community go deeper live well and love your community and when i say go deeper it means go deeper into relationships go deeper into god go deeper into uh, community and live well 
you know, not just be selfish, but how does it live well? Look after your mind, your body and your spirit, and your soul. How can we live well? And also love your community. Now, I live in Roundhouse Park. Uh, most of you, I imagine, live in Cringleford somewhere. How can we look after the beast? How can we um, uh, see this community thrive and grow and be uh, be the best it can be? You know, in the lockdown, uh, lots of people had to trust their community. They couldn't get out. Lots of older people were to get trust. Sometimes strangers coming, knocking the door, delivering food and doing errands, collecting medication, prescriptions, taking pets out for walks. I wonder if you looked after each other, whether you were a trustworthy person or did you trust people? Did your family trust people during the lockdown? It was a very difficult time. And and I wonder how you feel now. Are you still a trusting person? Are you still a trustworthy person? So who do we trust? Well, do we trust our government? That's the, the, the royal crest there. And the government is a, a, a subject to the Queen and government is supposed to kind of liaise with the Queen and talk about what their plans. We had to really trust the government, didn't we, for lots of things to kind of uh, with our taxes. Your parents have to pay taxes and the money goes to the government and, and that pays for lots and lots of things. But do we trust them to make the right decisions? Uh, some people do and some people don't. What about a local council, South Norfolk Council? They're responsible for making sure your bins get emptied and uh, looking after roads, things like that. You know, do we trust those? There's lots of people we have to trust. We've even got a local council of people called uh, Kringleford Parish Council. They make decisions about the parks. Have you noticed by the Willow Centre, they put up a new gate uh, by that teen park and decided to put a hedge around to keep us safe because people have said, look, we were trusting you to look after us and look after our children and make sure people are safe. What about uh, the NHS, the National Health Service? We really had to trust them, haven't we? We've had to uh, kind of the doctors and nurses and the different medical professionals uh, helping us to keep well and safe. Uh, but we've had to trust them and they've had to trust us not to kind of use them willy nilly. That we've got to only go in in the middle of the pandemic if we were really, really sick. Uh, what about the news? don't know about your family but when we when sometimes we we're watching the news to find out what's been going on and how difficult it's been and we had to really trust that the news would tell us the truth and be honest uh, uh, and that doesn't happen in other countries you know sometimes they they tell false news fake news but we got to trust that uh, people like the institutions like the bbc a uh, british broadcasting company to tell us the truth and tell us what's really going on in the world what about um uh, the police what do we trust them to look after us to catch the criminals to uh, to abide by the rules uh, we don't all do what we want all the time we have to trust the police and, and the rules that they put in place and the fire brigade you know if there's a fire or an emergency at your home or an accident we've got to trust the fire brigade have we to come and uh, rescue us and protect us what about um Cringleford Hub, that's who I work for. You know, Cringleford Hub, we try to help our community look after itself, to make help us be neighbours to one another, to be friends for one another. Sometimes I tell them my job is to, is to be a friend to people and help people to be friends with each other. And it's simplest forms in our community. What about St. Peter's Church? Do we trust Reverend Graham? Do we trust the church to kind of uh, to be praying for us, to be there for us, uh, to be open to everybody? Do we trust them? Sometimes people don't, do they? Maybe they've been something bad's happened to them. Maybe they get upset. But do we trust uh, St. Peter's Church? Do we trust our local church? Do we trust the school? Cringleford School? With your teachers and the and the people who get your food ready and look after you and the uh, the people in the uh, office staff and do we trust them? Do we trust our neighbours in Cringleford? The people around, we said during the pandemic, we had to trust people to do the right thing. Do we trust our, our family to look after us, to love us, to take care of us? Do we trust our friends to be good friends? You know, what? there are lots and lots of people to trust. I wonder who do you really trust? I'm going to show you a little video clip now and it's by from comedian Matt Lucas and he made this little video because at the time he didn't trust the government during the coronavirus and he thought things were really unclear what the, their guidance that they were giving us so he kind of did a funny little thing so anyway watch this and see what you think to it so we are saying don't go to work go to work don't take public transport go to work don't go to work stay indoors if you can work from home go to work don't go to work, 
go outside, don't go outside, and, uh, and then we will or won't uh, do something or other. You know, Matt Lucas in that video clip, along with lots of people, thought the government's advice was unclear and it led to confusion and it led to people not trusting the government to do the right thing. So why do we trust people? What is it that makes them trustworthy? Well, let's go back to our definition. Uh, to trust someone is to believe that someone is good and honest. Have we seen that in people, whether it's a big institutions or the government or our friends, or our family? Is, are they good? Are they honest? Do they do what they say they're going to do? Uh, and, and do they keep us safe? Have they got a track record of not doing harm to us, to doing the right thing? And so and that doesn't mean that people are bullies, but sometimes if they forget to do things or uh, don't like, like, for instance, Mr. Ryder at school. What if he just never locked the school up? He forgot or he left equipment out and people got tri tripped over. You know, Mr. Ryder's job is to keep us safe. So he's a trustworthy person in the school. So we can trust him because he has shown that he does the right thing. And also, we know that to trust someone, to someone to be trustworthy, they have to got to be safe and they've got to be reliable. So whether we trust uh, uh, our school because it's, we know it's a safe place and we, and we know it's always been there, it's going to be there for us, it's going to be for next, there for the next kids to come along, it's safe and reliable. That's what it means to trust and that's how we can trust people. You know, in the Bible, there's a book called the Book of Proverbs and Proverbs are wise sayings, things that help us uh, to live well, help us to live right and live the best way we can. Now, in Proverbs, it says this, trust in God with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do and he will show you which path to take. Do we trust other people do we trust kind of institutions people like the government uh do we trust ourselves do we trust our family but more than that i say do we trust god you know sometimes things get really difficult really hard we don't know who needs who to turn to but i know that god loves you and god loves me and god loves people and he's the most trustworthy person in the universe because no matter what he looks out for us wants to keep us safe and wants the best for us and are we willing to trust God with things even though we'd like to know the answers we'd like to know everything that's set clear but the proverb says if you trust God he'll make the path clear for you he will show you which way to go and what to do trust in God well that's a big challenge and that takes a lifetime to learn how to do that but I'm still learning and I hope you're learning too I'm going to finish with a prayer now. And this is a prayer by a, a lady called Teresa of Avila. And she lived from 1515 to 1582. And she devoted her life to God. She wanted to learn how to trust God with everything, with the whole of her life. She ended up becoming, becoming a nun. And because she trusted God, people started to trust her, would come to her for wise advice and listen to what uh, she had said them because they trusted her. So here is a prayer. And if you want to say amen at the end of it, you can join in with saying amen. So you might want to close your eyes, put your hands together just to stop you from fiddling. Uh, so let's pray. Dear God, let nothing disturb us, nothing frighten us. All things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. They who have God find they lack nothing. Alone, God suffices. Amen. Well, that's it for your assembly this week. I hope that together we can trust one another and you become, become a more trusting person. So if I don't see you soon, I'll see you next time. Bye.